There are lots of misconceptions out there about what the natural sound of Latin should be. Some say ecclesiastical pronunciation is more natural because, they believe, it is derived from the pronunciation of quote-unquote vulgar Latin. This is false. And others claim ecclesiastical pronunciation is from the sound of standard Latin during the late Roman Empire. But this is also completely untrue, as we will explore in this video. Individuals favoring the classical pronunciation say it is the better and more correct sound for Latin. But what they think classical pronunciation is might differ drastically from the reality. How did these two pronunciation standards come into being, and how are they intimately tied into the history and identity of Latin, the immortal language? My name is Luke, and this channel is Polymathy. Now, first off, I want you to know that the goal of this video is not to disparage or recommend one pronunciation system over the other, but rather to give information about the origins of these two standards. I love both pronunciations, and I use both conventions regularly, if classical a bit more frequently. It's worth mentioning that the restored classical pronunciation has become a de facto international standard, even having been adopted by some members of the clergy in Northern Europe, which was a really surprising revelation to me. And many fluent Latin speakers of prominence in Italy, such as Roberto Carfagni, Irene Regini, Alessandro Conti, Tommaso Bodi, and others, have also taken to prefer restored classical pronunciation, which has helped them reach a wider audience. But all of them can revert to the ecclesiastical pronunciation whenever they find it convenient to do so. And that's a dual skill I strongly advocate everyone learning. Also, know that ecclesiastical Latin and classical Latin are not different languages or even different dialects. So what does classical Latin even mean? Classical Latin refers to the literature of the first century BC and the first two centuries AD. Formal Latin style went through some changes for some of the authors in the late Latin period and through the medieval Latin period. But even then, Latin mostly conformed very closely to the classical language of Cicero. And the Latin written style used from the Renaissance to this day, follows the precepts of classical Latin literature very closely. Latin is just Latin, and you can use either classical or ecclesiastical pronunciation convention to access the language and its literature. The phonology of Latin is a subject I've enjoyed studying over many, many years, and this is probably because I speak some other modern languages, so I appreciate the importance of emulating native speakers' pronunciation as closely as possible. And as a consequence, I want to emulate Latin native speakers as well. But since they're all dead, that isn't as easy as it is for a modern language. Nevertheless, determining the native pronunciation of ancient Romans and trying to speak Latin that way is very important to me. And thanks to the work of linguists and philologists, we know the way ancient Roman Latin sounds to a high degree of certainty. There is more room to maneuver, more potential for plausible variation than one can find in, say, the French language's standard Parisian register. However, I equate these plausible variants to the varieties of accent and dialect that exist in any modern language. Differences that can be heard from region to region and city to city, just as in Italy's provinces today or across the English-speaking world. There are two common pronunciations of Latin most people know about. The restored classical pronunciation and the Italian ecclesiastical pronunciation. Here is a sample of what Cicero might have sounded like in the first century BC using the restored classical pronunciation of that time period. Cum defensionum laboribus senatorisque munderibus aut omnino aut magna ex parte est aliquando liberatus, retulime brute, teortante, maxime ad ea studia, quae retent animo, remissa temporibus, longo intervalu intermissa revocavi. At comnium artium, quae rectam vivendi uiam pertinerent, ratio disciplina studio sapientiae, quae philosophia dicitur, conteneretur, hoc mi latinis literis illustradum putavi. Non quia philosophia graecis et literis et doctoribus percipi non posset, sed meum semper judicium fuit, omnia nostros aut invenisse per se sapientius quam graecos, aut acceptabilis vecisse meliora, quidem digna statuissent, in quibus elaborarent. And here is the same in Italian ecclesiastical pronunciation. In the text, I'll underline the letters that are pronounced differently. 
cum defensiorum laboribus senatorisque muneribus aut omnino aut maniax partes aliquando liberatus, retuli mei brute, te hortante, maxime adea studia, quae retent animo, remisse temporibus, longo intervallo intermissa revocavi, et comnio artium, quae ad rectam vivendi viam pertinerent, ratio disciplina studio sapientiae, quae filosofia dicitur, conteneretur, hoc mici latinis literis illustrandum putavi, non quia filosofia grecis et literis et doctoribus percipi non posset, sed meum semper judicium fuit, omnia nostros aut invenise per se sapientius quam grecos, aut acceptabilis fecise meliora, quae quidem digna statuissent, inquibus elaborarent. So, as you can hear, they're quite similar, and totally mutually intelligible. But believe it or not, people get really heated about using one over the other. Let's talk about the origin of the Italian ecclesiastical pronunciation. The traditional Italian pronunciation of Latin was selected by the Catholic Church under Pope Pius X in the first decade of the 20th century to be the pronunciation used universally by clergy. Before that, in the countries outside of Italy, Latin was pronounced by means of different traditional pronunciations. These traditional English, German, Polish, French, Spanish, Croatian, Portuguese pronunciations of Latin were mostly put aside by ecclesiastical institutions in those countries in favor of the Italian version by the mid-20th century to conform with the church in Rome. And this is one reason the ecclesiastical pronunciation is sometimes still called the Roman pronunciation of Latin, which I find terribly confusing since the Roman here means the Roman Catholic Church, while Roman in a lot of people's minds evokes the ancient Roman civilization. And this interest in Roman civilization and letters during the Renaissance led to the rediscovery of ancient Latin phonology, which was begun famously by Erasmus. In the generations that followed, the understanding of ancient Latin pronunciation had progressed so successfully that by the late 19th century, most academics and scholars had adopted the restored classical pronunciation for all their communication and education in Latin. This restored classical pronunciation is meant to be a faithful revival of the sound of classical Latin circa the first century BC. And there are dozens of hours of me speaking in restored classical pronunciation on my other YouTube channel, Scorpio Martianus, and you can go listen to that if you like. So, one important thing to observe here is that, in our modern world, the restored classical pronunciation was universalized as an entity before the ecclesiastical pronunciation was, by a few decades. That doesn't mean one is better than the other. Still, I've heard the contrary used as an argument, so I want to dispel that idea. I'll reiterate. Universal, restored classical pronunciation predates universal ecclesiastical pronunciation, simply because members of the Catholic Church, prior to Pope Pius X, would use whatever national pronunciation they knew best. What's really fascinating is that Latin pronunciation by the end of the Western Roman Empire had actually changed very drastically away from the classical pronunciation you hear in most of my videos on Scorpio Martianus. It sounded much more like modern Italian, because in Italy, of the late Roman Empire, most final consonants, like final M, final S, final T, had become silent. For example, multu was pronounced molto in Italy of the late Western Roman Empire. Cantas had become canti. Dixit, disse. And by the way, I'm not just talking about the vulgar Latin or some kind of common speech, I mean the Latin of everybody. They would write it in the way that looks like classical or even ecclesiastical Latin writing, but they would pronounce it very much like they do today. Another example, most short U became O. For example, Mulier was pronounced Molie already by the end of the late Western Roman Empire. Most short E became E, and most consonant combinations were simplified. For example, Dictum was pronounced detto, factum, fatto. Stressed short e became ye. For example, when it was already viene. Stressed short o became wo. For example, homo was now uomo. And between vowels, the letter b became a v sound. So habere was now avere, along with other changes. Thus, the 5th century AD Latin pronunciation in Italy 
is actually unrecognizable to most people as even being Latin. It's way more like Italian. I demonstrated in a video that I'll link in the description. But here is the beginning of John from the Bible in classical pronunciation. In principio erat verbum, et verbum erat apud Deum, et Deus erat verbum. But in the 4th to 5th century AD, in my reconstruction of late Latin in Italy, the time the Latin of the Bible was written, it would sound more like this. In principio era verbo, e verbo era podio, e dio era verbo. Even though it's still spelled the same, it sounds way more like modern Italian than what we usually think of as Latin. Here's another example, classical pronunciation. In ipso viterat, et viterat lux hominum. In the 5th century AD Italy, though, in esso vitera, e vitera lus uomino. That's crazy, right? And we have enough commentary by contemporary grammarians such as Pompeius, among others, to have a pretty clear picture of how evolved, how changed Latin pronunciation had become by this time. And its resemblance to modern Italian is striking. Here are those same lines in ecclesiastical pronunciation for the sake of comparison. In principio erat verbum, et verbum erat apud Deum, et Deus erat verbum. In ipso vit erat, et vit erat lux hominum. Roger Wright, in his book Late Latin and Early Romance, which you see here, demonstrates that until the year 800 AD, Latin is pronounced the same, whether formally written or spoken in the streets. Just as an American today, such as myself, writes in English, in a standard English spelling, a spelling based on the sound system of Middle English, composing a script for a YouTube video in a manner rather a bit more formal than how he speaks spontaneously. Yet the pronunciation of his casual speech and formal speech is nearly the same. Dr. Randall Booth makes great arguments about this for ancient Greek as well, and check the description for that link. In modern English, we write the word night, K-N-I-G-H-T, but we don't pronounce it as in Middle English. Well, that pronunciation was something like knicht, and we pronounce it night. Thus, also in late Latin. In certain regions, like Italy, the word it comes, wenit, sounds like viene, just as it does in the modern language that's in Italy. Thus, Latin retained a written standard founded in the classical pronunciation that had deviated from normal phonology by quite a lot over hundreds of years, just as modern English spelling corresponds mostly to Middle English phonology. So since it obviously is not a natural evolution, where did the Italian ecclesiastical pronunciation even come from? By the early 9th century AD, the situation had become very difficult for the clergy of Charlemagne, the newly crowned Holy Roman Emperor. In his empire, Latin is all written the same way, but it is pronounced like Proto-Italian in Italy, like Proto-Spanish in Spain, like Proto-Portuguese in Portugal, and like Proto-French in France. Now, keep in mind that 9th century people living in what we call today Portugal, Spain, France, and Italy all believed they were just speaking Latin. But if we heard them speak, we would merely say they were obviously speaking older forms of Portuguese, Spanish, French, Italian, etc. A moment ago, I demonstrated the reconstructed sound of late Latin in Italy. But spoken Latin pronunciation had diverged quite differently in Portugal, Spain, and especially France as well. We can imagine the confusion as being something like an Australian and an American trying to understand a Scot speaking English. I'm sitting beside the guy that's pulled in three and a half billion dollars. <laughs> the ninth century had diverged even a good deal further than this. So this is a big problem. To facilitate spoken communication throughout the Catholic world, Charlemagne hired Alcuin, who was from England, to standardize the pronunciation of Latin. He based it on his own pronunciation of Latin, which in England was quite conservative and most like classical Latin. And he refined it by instituting that Latin would thenceforth be spoken with just one sound for each letter. And in this way, Alcuin and Charlemagne restored Latin pronunciation to be very similar to what we know today as the post-Erasmian restored classical pronunciation. Thus began the First Renaissance, the Carolingian Renaissance, wherein everyone who read Latin had to speak written Latin with this new restored classical-like pronunciation, where the final consonants were all enunciated, the vowels were not diphthongized, etc. 
reversing all the natural evolutions of the late Latin or early Romance tongues of the previous 800 years. And I really want to emphasize that this change is what created the original Renaissance. This is what begins medieval literature and sets the foundation for future society. Roger Wright emphasizes how huge a change this was. Here he is again. It would be as if we all started to say night as knicht, or even knigget, or the word orange as orange. It was crazy for most people of the native Latin population of southern Europe, but it was the way Latin was pronounced by the Englishman Alcuin in 800 AD. Thereafter, a man in, say, Spain, could only know Latin if he learned to read and thus pronounce the written language in this highly artificial, restored classical manner. And thus the spoken Spanish, or as they called it, spoken Latin in Spain, no longer became mutually intelligible with church Latin due to this artificial pronunciation shift. Well, here's another example of how weird this must have been for some people. I'll recite the paragraph I just said with the phonology of classical Latin. Terre after, a man in Spain called only know Latin if he learned to read and to pronounce te ruiten language in tis higlu artificial restored classical manner, and tus te spoken Spanis or as te caledit spoken Latin in Spain no longer became mutualu intelligible with curc Latin, due to tis artificial pronunciation sift. <laughs> so you can imagine just how difficult it was for someone whose natural Latin pronunciation had greatly deviated to even get used to such a strange thing. And yet, that's what happened. So what was this Spanish guy speaking at home, if not Latin? He surely thought to himself. From then on, the idea of what would become distinct Portuguese, Spanish, French, Italian, and other Romance languages began to develop and were written down phonetically to distinguish them from the new artificially pronounced Latin of the church. And this is when Latin died. Said better, it became immortal because it took on a nearly classical pronunciation system that matched the classical literary style, a style that remains intact to this day. We say that the Romance languages branched off from Latin. This is true. But in the ninth century, it was Latin that branched off from Romance. And that's a nutty revelation. Or to put it another way, written Latin was artificially made an entity separate from the natural spoken Romance languages because of the classicizing, normalized pronunciation of Carolingian Europe. This massive pronunciation shift, this restoration of a sound of Latin very similar to classical Latin, permitted an improved literacy and effectiveness of communication, and it enhanced the intuitive sense of grammar in the authors of the Carolingian Renaissance, who sought to refine Latin written style into a form much closer to that of the first century BC. Latin was reinvented in this period into what we know it to be today because of this classicizing shift in pronunciation, which was inexorably tied to the newly conserved literary style. Thus Latin, no longer yoked to that unruly flock of what linguists call living languages, with all their inevitable mutations and evolutions, has transcended into immortality. While other modern languages like weeping willows, bend and change under the forces of the winds of time, the Roman tongue is the mighty cypress tree which stands firm above them all, to paraphrase Virgil. That is what makes Latin the perfect and unique instrument to communicate ideas precisely over millennia. Shakespeare is different from my English, but the way we quidites speak Latin, is the same as Cicero, Alcuin, Petrarch, Erasmus, and Newton, a unified idiom of nearly two dozen centuries. And this is the origin of the Italian ecclesiastical pronunciation we know and love today. 
In time, even this restored classical pronunciation of Alcuin and Charlemagne gradually became nationalized and influenced by the standardized languages of Europe that started to come into their own, such that eventually Spain, Poland, Italy, etc., all had slightly different variants of Latin pronunciation. And uh, see Roger Wright's book, here it is again, for more on this topic. Thus, the only naturally evolved pronunciation of Latin is merely the modern Portuguese, modern Spanish, modern Catalan, modern French, modern Sardinian, modern Sicilian, modern Italian, and modern Romanian, and all their sister tongues and dialects, not the ecclesiastical pronunciation. The ecclesiastical pronunciation in no way represents the natural evolution of Latin in any way or stage. The Italian ecclesiastical pronunciation of Latin, much to the horror of the patriotic Italian, I imagine, is actually the result of an artificial restoration of Latin pronunciation devised by an Englishman imposed by a Frankish king of a Germanic empire. <gasps> now, does that make ecclesiastical pronunciation of Latin illegitimate? <laughs> Of course not. The ecclesiastical pronunciation of Latin has been used by the erudite in Italy for hundreds of years. Both the Carolingian restored classical pronunciation, which becomes what we call ecclesiastical pronunciation today, and the post-Erasmian restored classical pronunciation, which with each passing year of assiduous study and practice by its most zealous aficionados, becomes more and more true to the sound of first century BC Latin, each pronunciation convention is mutually intelligible with the other. Both are acceptable styles of Latin pronunciation. One is not better than the other per se. All we can say is that some people have a subjective preference to use one or the other. And that's just fine. One should use whatever convention pleases most. And better yet, I recommend everyone learn to recite Latin in both pronunciations to develop an aesthetic appreciation of each and increase our tolerance and acceptance of the other. Here's a timeline of events chronicling the pronunciation changes and systems we talked about. Latin literature begins in the 3rd century BC. The 1st century BC is the beginning of Classical Latin, and that's where the restored classical pronunciation is centered. Classical Latin literature continues into the first two centuries AD, whereupon there are the first changes of a fricative pronunciation of the letter V, the W sound, such that it becomes a V. And this is also true of the intervocalic B, the letter B between vowels, it also becomes a V sound for many speakers. We also start to see that the TI plus vowel changes into TS, such as NUNTIUS becomes NUNTIUS for many speakers. And it's at this point I'd like to dissuade all champions of restored classical pronunciation from believing that their sound is the exclusive voice of all the ancient Romans, or even of the Romans of the classical period by pointing out that by the latter half of classical Latin literature, at least some, if not most, Latin speakers have changed the wa to va, or the like, and many are also saying nuncius instead of nuntius. <laughs> also, quite a few non-urban Romans, rustic Latin speakers outside of the city, had long since made diphthongs i and oi into just e. And not only i and oi were e, but also au had become o, for the same folks. <laughs> Thus, anyone who uses the restored classical pronunciation must be aware that their way of speaking is modeled on a very particular time and place, which is, of course, very appropriate for classical Latin literature. Still, keep in mind that pronunciations are changing during the classical times, changes which demonstrate that a few sounds of ecclesiastical Latin do have their beginning in classical Latin. By the beginning of late Latin, Front vowels experience a change in many forms of Latin, particularly the form in Italy. Stress short e becomes ye, and most short i become e. And diphthongs i and oi monophthong eyes into e as a general phenomenon in pretty much of all Latin now, not just in the rustic variety, as it was during the classical period. Final consonants like m, s, t become silent. And by the 4th century, back vowels change. The diphthong au becomes o, stressed short o becomes wo, and most unstressed u become o. In the 5th century AD, ge and ge sound like they do in Italian, at least in Italy, ce and je, for most speakers. <laughs>
This sound of che and je is particularly important as a characteristic of ecclesiastical Latin pronunciation. Wouldn't you agree? And yet, it occurs so much later than the change of the ti plus vowel into ts, like nuncius, and long after the change of intervocalic b into a fricative, such as the word hominibus, and that's in the classical pronunciation. Well, by the late Latin period in Italy, it's omenevo. Just to drive the point home, this is why ecclesial Latin pronunciation is not a natural stage of the sound of Latin when it was a living language. Ecclesiastical Latin ignores most of the massive changes of late Latin and was deliberately designed so during the reign of Charlemagne. It's merely a convention that has been used in Italy for some centuries, as were other parallel traditional conventions in other European countries. By the time Charlemagne is crowned Holy Roman Emperor in 800 AD, the pronunciation differences of even standard formal Latin are so great between the peoples of Europe that Alcuin gets hired to institute a standardized pronunciation. And this is when Latin is reborn an immortal language, dead in the sense that it is no longer just the highly formal variant of the spoken Proto-Romance languages, yet alive as the primary instrument of communication in Europe for the next millennium, and revitalized because it becomes more closely tied to the language of Cicero and Caesar in literary style. Medieval Latin starts with the Carolingian Renaissance, and during the medieval period, the standardized pronunciation diverges again, conforming, to varying degrees, to the native languages of the countries where it is spoken. Another classical revival, spearheaded by Petrarch and other humanists, starts the Renaissance most of us are familiar with, and thus also Renaissance Latin, where formal Latin style is made more like classical Latin. In the 16th century, Erasmus starts people thinking about the pronunciation of classical Latin literature, and eventually by the 19th century, the restored classical pronunciation becomes an international entity used by scholars and academics around the world. This is followed by the choice of the Catholic Church to make the traditional Italian pronunciation of Latin in the early 20th century the official sound of Latin in the Church, whereupon it becomes known as the ecclesiastical pronunciation. So there you go. Both restored classical and Italian ecclesiastical pronunciations have plenty of legitimacy in my eyes. Ecclesiastical pronunciation, or something very similar to it, has been used in Italy at least as long as Italian has been a language, starting in the 14th century, and has its origins with Alcuin and Charlemagne in the 9th century. Classical pronunciation, though, is just as legitimate since Latin in every major stage, as we have seen, has been reclassicized in style, and even sometimes in pronunciation, again and again through the ages. A classicizing pronunciation is both legitimate and historically consistent with how Latin has been treated over the millennia. Whether the first classical pronunciation, which is what we call the ecclesiastical pronunciation, or the modern restored classical pronunciation, which is a very accurate reconstruction of first century BC urban Latin. So hating on classical pronunciation is silly because those who favor restored classical are doing the same thing they were doing during the initial creation of ecclesiastical Latin pronunciation in the ninth century of Europe by trying to restore the old sound of the language. And hating on ecclesiastical Latin is also silly. It's been a standard for a good long while and Latin spoken in Italy has sounded like it for the better part of a thousand years. Unless you're seeking a high-fidelity, historically authentic sound for your Latin, it doesn't really matter which convention you choose. Choose both. I have. Users of whichever pronunciation should, of course, learn long and short vowel distinctions of Latin. And I explain why in this video about how the Romans themselves mark their long vowels, and phonemic vowel length remains a part of Latin literature in all stages of erudite Latin from antiquity to the present, making it essential knowledge to properly access the poetry and prose, even if you use the ecclesiastical pronunciation. And that goes doubly for you classical pronunciation aficionados. I would like to conclude by saying that I hope I've been able to demonstrate why, whether naturally evolving or artificially instituted, pronunciation is an incredibly important part of the Latin language and its literature, inextricably linked to its history and how we use and understand it today. Indeed, pronunciation is the reason that Latin was reborn the immortal language.
Check out some other videos where I discuss these topics in more detail. For example, my talk on Latin and ancient Greek pronunciation evolution from 500 BC to 500 AD, in defense of the ecclesiastical pronunciation of Latin, and the Gospel of John with 5th century AD Latin pronunciation. Also consider supporting me on Patreon, where I have tons of hours of audio recordings in Latin and ancient Greek. My Patreon supporters make it possible for me to make these videos. And if you're still enjoying hearing the sound of my voice, you might also like my audiobook store. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please subscribe, like, and share. In proximum!